ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فعلي او فريز او ثانكس بيلونج تو الله سبحانه وتعالى وي فريز هيم وي جلوريفاي هيم اند وي سيك هيز هيلب وي سيك ريفيوج ان الله سبحانه وتعالى فروم ذا ايفل اوف اور سيلفز اند وي سيك ريفيوج ان الله فروم ذا ايفل اوف اور سينز whomsoever Allah guides no one can misguide and whomsoever Allah leaves us straight no one can guide I bear witness that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except Allah SWT. and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his final messenger. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the Quran, addresses, addresses us, those who believe in him, who believe in his book, who believe in his message. When Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, those who believe in everything that is required to believe in in Islam, not those that believe in part of the book and reject part. But those that believe in all of the book of Allah SWT and says, all of it belongs to Allah. So when Allah addresses the believers, He addresses the one who believes completely in what Allah SWT requires of us to believe in. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, taqu allaha haqqa tuqati. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ O you who believe, be mindful of Allah. This is a command. Be mindful of Allah and secure yourself. Secure yourself from dying outside of the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secure yourself, save yourself. That is Allah addressing us. That is Allah addressing us. And He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows what we need better than we do ourselves. Allah addresses also the believers again. When He says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, taqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadeeda. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O oh, you who believe, be mindful of Allah and only say that which is right. If you only say that which is right, Allah says that He will manage your affairs in this dunya. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ And He will manage your affairs in the hereafter. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And will forgive you your sins. وَمَنْ يُتْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Whomsoever obeys Allah and obeys His Messenger will definitely obtain the ultimate success. May Allah make us amongst the successful Allah Ma'ameen. Amma ba, Amma ba. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a time of awareness, in a time where Just with the click of a button, we know what is going on in a particular country. When before, 
we didn't have that opportunity. We will be informed about what goes on in our country because of a phone call. But now we can look deeper into matters. So we have many concerns. Many concerns the suffering of our brothers and sisters worldwide. And every day, there is a, there is a new image. This week, there was the image of, of the child found ashore. Our, our, our Syrian, our brothers and sisters, our Syrian refugees. <coughs> there was a flood. There was a flood in Facebook. It was flooded with these images. From everywhere to everybody is talking about this image. But there are many other images as well. Another concern is domestic violence. Domestic violence in general and also domestic violence within the Muslim community. We have to be realistic. And we have to be sincere. Because إِنَّمَا الْأَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Actions are judged by their intention. So we have to be sincere in addressing things in a sincere manner for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Not for my sake, not for your sake, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because there's no tawfiq except the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also have racism in general, in society, and also within our community. And the list goes on and on and on and on. And because there's so many concerns, it begins to develop in us the sense of helplessness. We can't do anything about it. Brothers and sisters, there is, and sometimes when we feel this way, we think that doing something suddenly is going to make this big change. We can't, all, 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 we can't also expect to be heroes. Right? Change comes with not with an individual, but with a community. Change comes with a community that is a real community, not a pseudo-community, not a community that is a body of human beings that come together but really don't know each other. But it is a community that knows each other's, know each other's names, knows each other's pains, knows each other's concerns, knows each other's likes. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the list goes on, but one author wrote in the 80s, and this book was popularly used in the seminaries where people will go to become priests. And it's a book that is based on psychology, and religion. So he states that the root of helplessness, listen carefully, Allah also addresses this as well. And I will point it out just so you can, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all knower. The root of helplessness is the ignorance and lack of knowledge. When someone fears Islam because of the, the, the its and bits and pieces of information that they get in, in the source of, of information, once they get to know a little bit about the true meaning of Islam, they, they, they have a paradigm shift. They begin to see things differently. They, they, we didn't know this. And this is a reality. And I go to churches, I go to synagogues and speak about Islam. I went to a synagogue and I spoke about Abraham in the Qur'an, from the Qur'an, no explanation, nothing. 
just giving them an experience here. Have an experience. Hear the, the Quran in Arabic, and this is the meaning. That's it. To such an extent that the rabbi said, I am always amazed about the, the, the beauty of the sound of the Quran. The rabbi, in his own pulpit, he's saying this to the people. So the people are just in need of knowing. And we have to educate them. So brothers and sisters, today we're not going to touch on all these topics. But we will address one topic. Addressing racism. We look at how Allah describes races in the, race, race in the Qur'an and diversity in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheen, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakari wa untha, wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arifu. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Inna Allah alimul khabir. O mankind, O man, like, oh mankind, we created you from male and female and made you into nations and tribes so that you can know one another. Knowledge. Right? So that you can know one another. Inna akramakum Allahi atpaakum. The best and most honorable in the sight of Allah is the one that is the most God conscious. The one that is the most mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us quickly look at the word defined. Racism is defined as the poor treatment or violence against a people because of race. And also racism is a belief that some races are superior to others. Right? So the first step to addressing racism is addressing our hearts. Whenever you get that feeling that I am better than so and so because I am from this country and he is from that country, then we have a problem. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of their hearts. So you have to sincerely look at your heart. Am I a racist? Do I look down on others when they come into my business? Or when I hire them? Do I look down upon them? We have to be sincere. Because whoever does an Adam's weight of good will see it, and whoever does an Adam's weight of evil will see it. In the day of judgment, nothing will be missed. Nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ It is a sign from Allah. What is a sign from Allah? خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The creation of the heavens and the earth. وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ And the, the differences in your tongues, and in your colors. This is a sign from Allah. This is an ayah of Allah. So when you look at someone because of their color, you're looking at an ayah of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna fi dhalik, Inna fi dhalik la ayatil lil alimi. The root of helplessness is what? The lack of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in that there is a sign, in the, in the diversity of humanity there is a sign for people who have knowledge. For those who have knowledge, for those who know, when they see the beauty in diversity, they see it as an ayah of Allah. They praise Allah. They get to know the other. See, we don't hate racists. We hate the action that these creatures of Allah do. We don't hate the human beings. We should not. 
because Allah can guide them. Look at the story of the Sahabas and how many were guided. Now brothers and sisters, the father of arrogance is Iblis. I'm not going to say was Iblis because he still exists. So the father of arrogance is, is Iblis. Shaitan, Satan, Satanas, El Diablo, however you want to call it. Same one. <laughs> and his army. And his soldiers. He's the one that said what? What is, what is one of the definitions of racism? The feeling of superiority towards others, right? Because of our one race being superior to other, thinking that one is better than others. Allah says, Inna karamakum in the light, atqaqum. Allah says, Who is the best of you, right? But look at what Iblis said, Ana khayr, Ana khayrun minhu. I am better than him, right? I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from tin. So Islam, brothers and sisters, let's look at incidents in the times of the Prophet It existed. Islam came to extract racism. If we find ourselves, if we find ourselves, if we find when we go back to our countries that racism exists, that has nothing to do with Islam, but it has to do with our lack of practices of Islam. Well, I've been to the Muslim world, and I have other students of knowledge that have been to the Muslim world and have experienced racism when they went to learn about Islam. That's a reality. Name calling, etc., <coughs> it exists. I'm going to address two incidents. One incident was the one of Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala and Bilal radiallahu ta'ala Two sahabas. Abu Dhar and Bilal got into an argument. And Abu Dhar became upset and said, You cannot comprehend because you are the son of a black woman. When the Prophet ﷺ heard of this, he became very upset. And he addressed Abu Dhar. And he said, I have been told that you addressed Bilal. You addressed Bilal as the son of a black woman. Abu Dhar was very embarrassed. And the Prophet ﷺ responds and said, this means that you are still hanging on to the pre, the ways of the pre-Islamic ways. You are hanging on to these, these acts of jahiliyyah, of before Islam. So he, he indicates something and then he says, Islam has gotten rid of all those wrong ways of judging people. Look at this. Now, what does Islam have to say? Not what do I feel? What do I like? What does Allah's way of life have to say? Islam got rid of this wrong ways of judging people. Judging people by family, fame, color, wealth. It has, been, it has established the best and most honorable way of dealing. Looking at the honor of the men by their piety, by their mindfulness of Allah, and their upright behavior. Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu became ashamed and he went to the house of Bilal and he put his head on the floor and he said he said this head will not rise from here this is a sahaba this head will not rise from here until the blessed feet of Bilal steps on it for the impoliteness of Abu Dhar. 
Abu Dhar realized his mistake. Now what is the response, the, 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 the response of Iman, right? What is the response of Bilal? That's the question. Bilal said, that face deserves to be kissed. That face deserves to be kissed. And Abu Dhar is forgiven. Look at this. Look at what Islam did for a person who used to be a slave. Look at that response. He could have reacted in his own manner, right? As in the time of Jahiliyyah. And he had the right to. Imagine somebody disrespects your mother, what will you do? Think about it realistically. You will make dua against them. You will after beating them down. You will do all. You, you, you don't know how many things you can do. Or you will do. Because of the, of the emotional outburst that you will have. That's my mother. And Look at the response of Bilal. He went to the authority. And this is how Islam teaches us to address things. He went to the Prophet The Prophet was informed. The Prophet as a leader addressed it. And Abu Dhar then after that being addressed went seeking forgiveness from the person that he hurt. And then Bilal with a forgiving heart said that face deserves to be kissed. SubhanAllah. This is teachings from the Quran. Change that which is bad for that which is good. Brothers and sisters, Another example, a man was visiting Medina and he saw a group of three individuals. One of them was Bilal ibn Rawah. Same one, same Bilal. Bilal al-Habashi from Abyssinia. So hey, and Lumi, Suhaib the Roman. And also Salman the Persian. So three three foreign new Muslims. So the man said he saw these three sitting together and he said if the if the tribes of Aus and Khazraj support Muhammad and they are his people, right? They are Arabs like Muhammad. Or they are from the land, right? Or they are from the land, right? They are from the land. But what are these people doing here? What, what, is, what are these people, Bilal, Salman, and Suhaib, what are they doing here? The Prophet ﷺ became angry. And straight away he went to the mosque. And he summoned the people to Salah. Hayya la Salah. And, and people when they hear Hayya Salah, they start to coming towards the masjid. They came to the mosque. And he addressed it. He said, O oh people, know that your Lord and sustainer is one. Your father is one. Know that the Arabism of any one of you is not from your mother or your, or your father. It is no more than a tongue. Whoever speaks the Arabic 